Right. Assignment two. Me all. So assignment two is the title Solving Problems Involving Sinusoidal Functions Vectors and Using Differential and Integral Calculus to Solve Engineering Problems. Just to be aware, there's there's still um, two or three bits to do before you can finally finish um, this assignment over the next couple of weeks or so. Issuing today, Tuesday the 19th of May, you're due to hand in on Tuesday the 23rd of June and you have a draft hand in date of the 3rd of June which is a Wednesday I think just check that 19th 26 is next week. Third is the week after. Let's get my calendar up. So we're issuing the 19th. Two weeks is to the second. So the drafts I'm expecting to come in by email by Wednesday the 3rd of June. Okay. They will be commented on as to the past tasks. So hopefully by that time you'll either have a pass in the bank or you'll know what you're going to do more or less to get a pass. All right. Um, <laughs> right. Learning outcomes being tested are use analytical and computational methods for solving problems for relating sinusoidal wave and vector functions to their respective engineering applications. And learning outcome four, examine how differential and integral calculus can be used to solve engineering problems. Okay. Moving on to the tasks. Right. Task 1A. Task 1A is a pass task and it covers P6, which is solve engineering problems related to sinusoidal functions. Task B is also um, a sinusoidal task, but it isn't part of the pass criteria. It isn't, or? No, it isn't, no. Okay. Yeah. If you if you read the criteria carefully, you can, just, you can see which bits are covered by which anyway. To be fair. Um, task C um, covers P7. So that's representing engineering quantities in vector form. And use appropriate methodology to determine engineering parameters. So we've covered that all in class. And task D is also P7. Yep. So that's two currents to add together. Uh, task, then we move on to task two, so that moves us on to the um, second learning outcome on differential integral calculus. Task A, which involves you finding um, rates of change, B and C, tasks A, B, and C, parts A, B, and C in task two are all. P8, rates of change for algebraic, log, logarithmic, and trigonometric functions. Okay. 
task D is not part as extension, not pass. And then task E is P9, which is used in integral calculus to solve problems, practical practical problems relating to engineering. We we haven't covered that yet. We'll be covering something along those lines um, next week. Okay. We also um, haven't covered the material largely for um, this task either, which is the extension task in, in that learning outcome. Yep. So in summary then, past tasks are in task one, part A, part C, and part D. And in task two, A, part A, part B, part C, and part E. Um, after, the, after all tasks, there is Going on, part F in, in task two is also not a past task. There's your standard derivatives and integrals. And then the assessment criteria. So I've told you where all of these past tasks are in the, in the assignment. And then you can extend your work for higher grades. Um, in learn and outcome three, use the compound angle identities to combine sine waves in a single wave. In the um, calculus part, formulate predictions of exponential growth and decay. And then in for the distinction, combine sine waves graphically and analyze the results between the two methods and find maximum and minimum of increase and decrease in functions. So it's fairly easy for you to pick out which parts of those tasks cover those criteria. All right, has anybody got any questions regarding the assignment? No. Oh, could um, those of you not on sound confirm in chat or something that you are? Happy that you understand task the assignment, please. No, Nathan, this morning, that's unusual. Anybody know why Nathan might not be here? No. <laughs> Hasn't said anything else, man. No, he's been here every other week. It's just strange. <laughs> 